What is the point in a smart appliance? Is it just a case of a company bolting smart functionality onto an appliance just because they can? Spoiler alert, yes, it pretty much is. But in this video, I'm going to show you the automation ideas that I've come up with for my smart appliances. I've recently replaced both my dishwasher and tumble dryer, and by a sort of coincidence, both replacement models happen to include smart connectivity features. Both devices are made by Bosch, and they support the Home Connect smart platform, which is shared by Bosch, Siemens, and Neff. Some manufacturers offer smart functionality, but the advantage of Home Connect is that they provide a public API, which means you can integrate them very easily into Home Assistant. Now, you can use the built-in Home Connect integration, and it'll probably work fine for most people, but I didn't get on with it. I stumbled across a third-party integration called Home Connect Alt. One of the biggest benefits of this integration for me is the ability to set the delayed start time in Home Assistant, but that's a spoiler for later in the video. You need to start by making sure that you have hacks installed in Home Assistant, see the instructions at hacks.xyz, or watch my hacks video for a tutorial on how to do that. The next requirement is to make sure that your Home Assistant installation is accessible externally on the internet, so as Home Connect can authorise your access. Again, I have another tutorial video on how to do that, and I'll put a link to that in the description too. The Home Connect Alt integration is already available in Hacks with no need to add a custom repository. So open the Hacks front page, click on Integrations, the blue Explore Repositories button in the bottom right hand corner, and then search for Home Connect Alt. Click on it to open up its information page, and then click on the blue download button in the bottom right hand corner, and the download button on the pop-up again. When that's finished, if you click on the back arrow, you should see that the integration is installed, but with a big red box around it saying it's pending a restart. Do not restart just yet. We need to do a little bit of manual configuration to link the integration with your Home Connect account. Firstly, we must configure the My Home Assistant service. Visit the URL my.home-assistant.io. Edit the Home Assistant instance URL and paste in the external URL for your Home Assistant installation. If you followed my guide, this will be the DuckDNS URL. From this point on, you must use the same web browser on the same computer to configure everything. Next, we visit developer.home-connect.com and we sign up as a developer. You need to fill in your names, the user account name for your existing Home Connect account, which is the one you sign into the Home Connect app with. Then you create yourself a new username, choose a suitable password, um, and your region. For account type, you should select Open Source Community. I'm already signed up, so I'm just going to sign in here. At the top of the page, choose Applications, and then click on Register Application. Type in something for the application ID. This is just a label, so you can call it something like Home Assistant. Leave the OAuth flow as authorization code grant flow. Then fill in your Home Connect app user account name again. Now comes the redirect URI. You need to paste in the exact URI that I have written here. This is a special redirect URL that uses the location we set up in the previous step when we configured My Home Assistant. Once you've filled everything in, scroll down and click on Save. You'll then be presented with a client ID and a client secret. Now this next bit is a critical step. Walk away from your computer for an hour. Totally walk away. The next steps might work straight away, they might not, but I really do suggest you just leave this whole thing for an hour to make sure that the IDs you've just set up activate properly. Have you waited an hour? Good. Carry on then. Back over in Home Assistant, you'll need to edit your configuration files. I suggest using the file editor add-on for simplicity. Uh, just open configuration.yaml and add the following lines. You then need to paste the client ID into the client ID section and the client secret into the client secret section. Save the configuration file, 
And now you can restart Home Assistant by going to Developer Tools and Restart. Once back up, make sure that you are accessing your Home Assistant installation using the external URL. That's the same one you used in the My Home Assistant configuration. When you've triple checked that, go to Settings, Devices and Integrations, Add Integration and choose Home Connect Alt. You'll be asked to open an external website, so click on that and choose Login with Home Connect and Login. You sign in using your username and password for the Home Connect app and click on Login. You'll be asked to approve the connection to the Home Connect developer program and then Home Assistant will ask you to link the account. And if all went well, you should see a success message. Click on Finish to approve it. What can we do with this then? Well, I'm clutching at straws for useful automations here, but I think the one I have for my dishwasher is probably the most useful. On. Every evening, I have to schedule my dishwasher to run an eco cycle at half past midnight when my off-peak tariff begins. That either involves pressing a series of buttons on the dishwasher itself, which might roughly get it to start at some point after the required time, or opening up the Home Connect app and choosing the right options. Both of these methods take a couple of minutes, but I've turned that whole process into an automation when I press a single physical button. That button doesn't have to be a physical IKEA shortcut one like the one I've used. It could be a Boolean helper in Home Assistant that's controlled by an Alexa command if you wanted. Let's look at how it works. The automation is triggered by a press of the button or a long press of the button. A short press sets a variable called dishwasher mode to this value here, which is eco50. Uh, a long press actually sets the variable to intensive. So if the dishes were really dirty, I can just long press the button and it will do an intensive wash cycle that evening instead. Then we have the actions. We check that the dishwasher is already off and if so, I play a text-to-speech alert out of the Echo speaker to say on. Then I send a notification to my watch and a power on request to the dishwasher itself. The next step is to wait for five seconds for the dishwasher to actually turn on. And then we tell the dishwasher to start the required program when our off-peak energy rates kick in. A couple of things to note here. I have a date time helper which stores the off-peak energy rate start time. Because I use this time in all sorts of integrations, if that time was to change, I'd rather change it in one place rather than hunt around for every automation that might be using it. The second thing to note is that you can't just tell the dishwasher to start at a specific time. You need to tell it how long to wait before starting. So this little calculation here takes the start time and works out how many seconds it is until that time, then passes that value to the start program service. The next part of this automation triggers if the dishwasher was already on when the button was pressed. It sends some notifications, stops the current cycle, waits 30 seconds and then turns off the dishwasher. And now it's time to discuss the tumble dryer. And there's not much you can talk about here. The only automation I've come up with so far is for it to announce out of the echoes whenever it has finished running. I'm not even going to walk you through that automation in this video, but I will put it up on the website if you're interested. Genuinely, if anyone has come up with any different and useful automations for their connected tumble dryer, then please let me know in the comments. I'm going to wrap this video up now. Uh, if you found this useful, then please click on the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.